morning. Thanks for joining us for Sunday School. We've been studying in this book called Speak Life. The subtitle is Restoring Healthy Communication in How You Think, Talk, and Pray. And the first section that we, we've already covered was about conversation between us and God. And then we did another section dealing with the conversation between our self-talk, between us and our, ourselves. And in this next section we started last week, we're talking about the conversation between us and the enemy of our souls. Today, we're going to be doing a chapter called Jumping the Fence. So when we moved to Flint, we had three young boys, and I was pregnant with Rob, boy number four. So some of the men on the board said, for the parsonage, what would you like? Would you like air conditioning or would you like a fence in your backyard? I'm going to have four children. Three of them I know are boys that like to get rambunctious. A fence, please. I will take a fence because then I know that they're safe and I know I can keep an eye on them, provide for them in, a, in the safety of the backyard. Well, I had never thought about it before, but today's chapter talks about how God gives us sort of a perimeter, a fence around our conversation with each other and how the enemy would like our conversation to be bent more towards selfishness and angst. So today we're going to be talking about jumping the fence. When are we tempted by the enemy to jump the fence out of the safety of the way God would like us to communicate. And what is, what's the result of that? James chapter 3 talks a little bit about the tongue. And it says that even though it's the smallest member of the body, it makes great boasts. And consider what a great forest is set on fire by the little spark. The tongue is that little spark. And then it goes on to say how the tongue is like a bit in a horse's mouth. With that bit, it can move the whole animal. That's how powerful our tongue is and our communication. No wonder the enemy would like to impact it. Now, if we go on in chapter 3 of James to uh, a few verses, I think we're going to start at 11. There are some important questions that are asked. Let's start in verse 9. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? Hey, that's a great question. God would like us to have a fresh water relationship with him. One that gives life and, and satisfies thirst. But the enemy would like us to get salty. Salty in the way that we think, our thought life. Salty in our conversations with God. And then in our conversations with each other. So we have to think about it. If God wants to keep a perimeter around our, our way of talking, and the enemy wants us to get salty. How do we do that? How do we keep from jumping the fence in our conversation? Well, relational freedom is found inside 
and not outside the protective parameters that God sets up. For instance, it made a lot of sense to me when I read that God intends for our sexual life to be within the parameters of marriage. He wants it to be something that blesses us. And he created it on purpose for, for good. But it's in the parameters of our marriage. And then to stay faithful with our marriage partner. It just, it made sense to me. I had seen some other people have broken hearts by not following that advice. It was set there for my good. There's other parameters that God's put up, like there's a relational fence when he says, consider the needs of others first. These parameters, these fences are important. Right now, we have four dogs living at our house, and one of them, Strider, was picked up at the pound. At the pound, his name was Highway because he was found out on the highway and they picked him up for his safety. That guy can jump a fence. He climbs it and gets out of our yard and into the neighbor's yards. And I'm worried for him that he might get lost that when it's time for him to have what he needs, provided his food and his water, that he'll have jumped the fence and not to be able to get what he needs. These fences that God has put up are for our safety. They're for our provision and for our good. And when it comes to conversation, Ephesians chapter 4 kind of gives us some insight on what are the parameters that God set up for our conversation. And remember, James says, uh, blessing and cursing shouldn't be coming out of the same stream, our conversation. God intends for that conversation to be a fresh water that satisfies and gives us life, but the enemy would like it to be salty, spewing out whatever um, happens to pop into our mind. So let's, let's look at Ephesians 4. We're going to start in verse 22, and we're going to talk about some concentrated advice on our communication. Here's what it says, verse 22 of Ephesians 4. You were taught with regard to the former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor for we are all members of the same body in your anger do not sin and do not let the sun go down while you're still angry and do not give the devil a foothold he who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work and do something useful with his own hands that he might have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you're sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, as in Christ God forgave you. I'm going to take you back 
to verse 26, the last part of, or 27, do not give the devil a foothold. Our enemy hates the fences of protection that God has set up for our lives. And I like how the author, Pastor Boyd, talks about conversational parameters that God set up. And he points us right here to Ephesians 4, to put off lying and speak truthfully, verse 29, to um, put off unwholesome talk and to build each other up. Verses 30 through 31, to not grieve the Holy Spirit, but get rid of anger, uh, bitterness, rage, along with every form of malice. And verse 32, to forgive. What will we do with Ephesians 4? Will we let it become a pr protective perimeter that we consciously, intentionally live in? I loved what the book had to say, so I'm going to read a little portion on page 183. We're not asked to help everyone else stay within the fences of God's command. We're asked to keep ourselves there, preferably every day. If we do, we'll know relational freedom as we've never known it before. If we don't, we won't. It all comes down to what we do with the exhortations like those in Ephesians 4. Will we get rid of bitterness? Will we choose to put away lies? Will we forgive as Jesus has forgiven us? Will we choose to build each other up? rather than tear down? The alternative is a straightforward one. If we refuse to live within God's param protective parameter, we become more vulnerable to Satan's schemes. That vulnerability eventually leads to our sinning more frequently, which only increases the distance between us and God. And when we're doing life at arm's length or even farther from God, it's impossible to reflect the character traits that only intimacy with him can yield. From reading this, I hope you're making the connection that the only way we can actually be honest and forgiving, compassionate and wise, is to allow our Heavenly Father to empower us, letting him input, and run our lives. By this point in the book, you're probably gathering what divine direction should sound like. It may sound like, get rid of your bitterness. Really, be kind. Stop fighting. Be helpful with your words. Anger is doing you no favors. Let it go and choose grace instead. Our enemy wants us to have focus our attention on others. When God is asking us to focus our attention on him, to get close, to let the Holy Spirit point out places where our conversation needs to change. And Satan tempts us to believe that we're justified in unforgiveness or that we're, we're, right in giving somebody a piece of our mind. We're told in Ephesians 4 to put off the old man. That's how this works. I'm going to take you to verses 20, or 17, sorry. So I tell you this, and I insist on it in the Lord, that you no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking, they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's into, in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. 
But you, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance to the truth that is in Jesus. And you were taught with regard to your old way of life to put off the old self, which is corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitudes of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. That's the only way that we can get to Ephesians 5.1, be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. It's by putting on the new man and checking our self-talk and bringing it under the control of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to put off falsehood and lies. I'm going to put on truth. I'll put off unwholesome talk and put on building each other up in the words that we say to each other. It's powerful. My mom used to have a saying that you'll know what's inside the hearts of people by bumping them, and then whatever's in them spills out. Um, it's true. The old man gets bumped and out spills anger, rage, jealousy, unforgiveness. The new man gets bumped and out spills things that will help others. It's coming from that relationship that we have first with God. And we have to monitor our self-talk the things that we're saying to ourselves. Then we realize that we have a need to refill by being in God's presence and letting the Holy Spirit flood us. And when our tank is starting to get low because we're tired, we're hungry, we have cabin fever, let's let our words be few and let's get into our quiet place with the Lord and refill. We think about it. Um, we speak unkind words and then we've jumped the fence. Those parameters that were put up for our conversation to protect us, when we start spewing out unkind words, we've jumped the fence just like Strider, and we put ourselves where we're not as safe, we can't be provided for as easily, we make a choice. So instead of letting our tanks be empty, getting bumped and, and the old man spilling out, let's refill. Let's spend time in God's presence. The more that we engage with God and the more that we have our refilling by his spirit, then every other relational exchange changes. It's touched by the new man filled with his presence. Then we can reflect what's said in Ephesians 5.1, we can be imitators of God and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. So I like Pastor Boyd's take on this, that there are communication fences that God wants us to live in. There are parameters that he wants us to keep for our blessing and for the blessing of other people around us. Would you ask him to show you 
how you can refill, how you can let the new man be filled with his spirit so that when you're bumped, what spills out is something that will help others. It's a challenge I'm going to take this week, and I hope that you will too. Next week, we'll be talking about forgiveness and touching back here in Ephesians 4 in verses 29 through the end of the chapter. Thanks so much for being with me today. Thank you.